Hey everyone, Brendan and Anthony here. How are you? All I'm thinking about is I'm afraid to look anywhere because I'm afraid somebody's gonna think I'm gonna kill somebody. I know. <laughs> so I don't even know what well, to do you, anymore. You know, I was actually For gonna, one guy. I was gonna start this video <laughs> and I was gonna say, Baldy and scary guy here, how are you? Because <laughs> I get that comment all the time. Oh You're my getting the scary comment. I know, right? Wow. And I knew I had some intensity to me Friday. Yeah. And it's passion. Yeah, I'm, know, I'm afraid to make eye contact with all of you because I don't want you to think <laughs> or feel a certain way, right? Ah! Right? Okay. Yeah. We get all that out. Yeah. So now we're good. Now we're good. Now we can start this. So, uh, hey, you know, we're going to have a discussion topic here. I was calling these uh, sound exchange sessions. You know, we haven't had one for a while. And, you know, what came to mind on this, something we've been talking about in some of our other videos is, you know, why do we connect with some artists? and not with others. Yeah. Right? So we had some off-tangent things where we were talking about, you know, we're not big fans of groups like Nickelback and Disturbed. It's yes. not that we hate them or anything. They just didn't connect with us. It's just not my thing, That's man. That's right. But then we've got other artists, in particular, I know you're a huge Mellencamp fan. Yes. You've got this great story about, you know, first time you're here in Mellencamp and what happened. Yeah. And, you know, that that is ingrained in you. And I've got those same kind of ones. So the idea of, you know, why is it that we've connected with that? And I just want to like muscle through that because it's going to be, a, I feel like we need a hell of a workout just to get through that. Cause that's right. a lot of deep thoughts and ideas on it is so, psychological. First thing is aside from the music, let's say the music just speaks to us. That's, that's going to yeah. be a course, but beyond that, cause like I know when I was a kid, I'd go to a record store you don't have a lot of money and you want everything but you've got to narrow it down and you're buying one album. Yeah. So what makes you buy that one album over something else? So I'm gonna say, first off, album art is one of the things I connect with. If it's got a good album cover, I'm gonna like that album better than say another one. Just, you, you know, if I like the singles, the songs, the things that are on that already, the music, yeah. you know, and I'm not going and I'm, you know, looking at it and say, well, it's got four hits on it. This one only has two hits, but I'm just saying, I like the music, I don't know which one to get better album cover kind of thing right. and so i was going to use this as an example when i was a kid this was the first rat album i bought right invasion of your privacy and i have to say i actually don't know if i knew specifically the songs like you're in love and lay it down when i was going in but i wanted a rat album and i bought this one and i why I, did you want a rat album I, well at that time i loved the song way cool jr okay so you knew it, you felt it, you oh, were I, into rap. Absolutely, rat. I was okay. into rap. I, I wanted, you know, some of that stuff. I knew, knew some of that. I knew round and round and stuff like that. But I went home with that one, and I'm quite sure I went home with it because of the album cover. Was it the? I mean, do you remember the other oh. one being in stock? That's another. That is another. Was thing. that the only one sitting? It's there? entirely possible. But I know I saw that, and I was just like, I got. You were go. in love. Yeah, I was in love with that. You know, kind of a thing. So I know that you know, when when. If there were multiple ones there, and I think there were, was, I ended up picking that out of the group of, of Rat. It was prior to Detonator coming out. And that's also over the, you're picking that one over the songs you knew. That's right. I was over Round and Round. I didn't buy out of the seller, and yet that's their most popular one, and I knew that. You went for Reach for the Sky. Yeah, even though, and I, I was specifically a fan of right at that time. This was like, I don't know, 87, 88. I don't know when that album was, but uh, Way Cool Jr. All over MTV, yeah. loving that song. But I, went I think it was much earlier than that, actually. Was it? When was what? Holy shit. Uh, I, thought, I think it's like, like 88. Is, wow. Because Detonator's 1990. Everything yep. was about two years apart. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so wow, I went home. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, and again, I mean, we could look at that and say, well, you know, it's got a hot girl on the cover of it. And I was a teenage boy at the time. And that's probably exactly why. But there's other things. So, like, growing up, my two older brothers played Quiet Riot and Twisted Sister. See, one of and, my my top one of my yeah. things was to be peer pressure when you walk in a record store. So mm -hmm. were these a peer pressure thing? Were these a you heard them from your brother and yeah. loved them, or I were they trying to live up to your brother's expectations mm -hmm. kind of thing? Because I yeah, close with you, my brother, who's my hero, mm -hmm. older, cooler. If right. I listen to his shit, so how much of that's in there? It, there might have been some of that because uh, I certainly wanted to make a connection with my older yeah. brother on it, but I was head over heels for the stuff. I remember trading my brother cassettes I had for his cassettes because he just wasn't that into it, I guess, or whatever. Was it like two for one? He's like, uh, oh yeah, it, it was. Yeah, I, I want your Quiet Riot tape. Yeah. Well, I need your Van Halen 2 
and your Carpenter's Christmas yeah. if you're gonna get right. my <laughs> Quiet Riot tape. Right. No, I, I lucked out somehow. I traded, and I don't even remember what the cassette was. I traded him one cassette for both the Quiet oh! Riot. Oh! I, I scored. So he was definitely, wow, he was yeah. over that shit. He was. Holy and, crap. And I, I played those things inside and out uh, when I was 16. I got my driver's license, could drive around playing that stuff so that's yeah. different than trying to live to an expectation because yeah. that's something that st has still stayed with you through to this moment absolutely the expectations have been stayed with you for that long right because right. something you at that point i was uh, and if he it. hated it you might have hated yeah it. But that's where the music took over that's where right. you really felt it because your brother dismissed it may yeah and it may have been and then become you, mine my own personal thing at yeah. that point i took it over and maybe he wanted it because of peer pressure because at the time that shit was big it was so yeah. he was probably these were the two big albums that were out at that time and how how much older was your brother than you three years so he yeah. probably had to have that right right everyone everybody he knew had it that's true that's true and maybe that's why why he owned that and he was never the big music fan the way i was he just whatever was popular he was into that sort of stuff but i saw that the cover spoke to me, and I was just like, whoa, what is this? The Quiet Riot cover spoke to you? Yeah, both of them. I thought I was going to get murdered with the Quiet Riot cover, but uh, as a kid, but it's, like, it's still cool. Oh, I mean, you know, D. Snyder on the cover holding that bone in that crazy outfit. You almost hope it's an animal bone, but, oh, God, you know, no you're idea. thinking, is that a human? <laughs> yeah, right? So, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot He's of things. He's holding a giant bone in his hand. Oof. <laughs> Could have a lot of fun with that. <laughs> But I think there's a, there's a lot of things. I mean, so for me, one of the things I'm hitting on here is the album art. And I know that that has always been a big one for me because there's been bands that have put out albums that have horrible album covers. And even when the albums are good, I, I just don't like them nearly as much because I like to hold the album. I want to look at it. I want to yeah. you know, read through it, that kind of stuff. And if it's got a bad album cover on it or the, the band shots, you know, they look really bad. You know that kind of stuff. I don't know that, that. I prefer no photos of the band this way. That doesn't even yeah affect it. Um, and I don't know, man. Album art. I love album art, and I bought records based mm -hmm. on album art. Right. But which doesn't happen a lot today. It goes away. Yeah. Album art to me, dis even though I, yeah. I slaughter stick it to you, right. not because it's a it's a woman in a bikini. There's just something awesome about the cover. Mm -hmm. I love Pearl Jam's Ten. I can't see those without yeah. that album art. But yeah, that stuff I didn't. Because when you first yeah. hear a song or two songs on the radio, and right. especially as a kid, right. before you have the money to buy the shit, that's right. There's you don't no see the art. art. That's There's true. Nothing. You know nothing. You're right. like, I'm getting this. So that's absolutely. You're, see, you're absolutely right in that. There is a connection to it through sound first, and then What's up, man? and then the art comes in after. Yes. It. Does the art push you over to get it? Does hearing, I believe it's fifty fifty. Right. Does hearing it on the radio do more than say if somebody recommends it to you? Depends on that how was much the you next like thing I was going to talk about. Depends on where your state of mind yeah. is. You know, when I when I had you know get an album recommended to me, kind of a thing, I tend to be less interested in someone's recommendations because it's not mine. It's yeah. yours. And yeah. if I hear it though, fresh from somewhere, whether someone else is playing it or it's in a yeah. movie or it's a whatever, and I'm I, more prone to go get it. Yeah. Then when somebody's like, "Hey, you got to go check this out," I'm always like, "Yeah, no, thanks, man. No, I'm yeah." And it, I, now I want to. Right. I never used to, but I do want to. Mm -hmm. Most likely, it's not going to happen. Right. I don't have the time. Right. The list is is well, fucking endless. I mean, I don't know how big your collection is, but I've got eleven thousand CDs. I've got a ton of vinyl. Yeah. Box sets and other things. So it's just huge. So when people start recommending stuff, it's like I've got a lot of stuff. Yeah. And it's not that I only just want to listen to that. It's just I've got the the, the bands, and then I've got the offshoots and the side projects and the solo so albums. Much. Yeah, and there's so much that's in there. But let's flip this for a minute because there's... Then what we're saying is why do we connect with some artists and not with others? Because I know... All right, so yeah, I mean, there's there's certain artists, though, that we don't connect with. And why is that? And so, like, for me... I always wonder that. Nickelback, Disturbed, Corn. Never got Yo, what's up, them. dude? What's up? Never got into them. There's no real particular reason for it, I think. Um, I mean, I'm a fan of Kiss, so why wouldn't I be attracted to the masks... Uh, or sorry, uh, uh, Slipknot. I'm thinking stuff. Slipknot. Um, Slipknot is another one I've never gotten into. You know, so like, why would I not be? It's maybe certain bands just have it. Yeah. I don't want Kiss without the makeup. Mm -hmm. I don't like bands that wear makeup. I don't like bands that wear mm -hmm. masks. Yeah. It's just, I, I don't. I gave up trying yeah. to figure out the right, specifics right. as to why. Right. But Kiss, you, I, can, I can tolerate. But you prefer they, bands not to have a gimmick. 
yeah, and that's so that runs deeper than okay. just what you like or what you don't like. There's right. something in, inherent in you mm -hmm. that is just, you know, it's 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 like fake people. Right. Stay the fuck away from me. Yeah. I I almost. What are you hiding behind? I don't know. Right. Whatever I'm going to say is going to be different than the people who love that and the reason oh, that they love it. We're sure. talking about uh, just what each draws. Uh, yeah. Each, of, yeah. It so, is your personal take. It's my yeah, personal I just, I take. Can't, and so even though we don't like these, well, I say we don't like, I don't know these bands. So I can't even say I don't like Nickelback. Destroy. I've never love really sat, sat down and listened but to But Kiss them. has me. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, for some reason, it didn't speak to me. I did not connect with it. When I looked at them, it didn't say, yeah, you know, these guys rock or I feel it yeah. or whatever. I didn't, same thing when I heard it on a radio. You know, is it is it after my time? You know, it's like there there's bands that have come post. There's a lot of things that are yeah. after your time. There's yeah. a lot of things that are before your time. Right. There's but, a lot of things that you're gonna turn 50 and you will, it will come and mm -hmm. it will tickle you in some way. You're gonna say, holy shit, it, take, yeah. it took me 40 years Neil Young. to find this Neil Young. Yeah. It hit me till I was 30. Dylan, right. I was 30 right. when I fell in love with these guys. Right. And now how I mean, much of that had to do with people trying to shove it down your throat when you were a kid or you just, well, it wasn't your time. How about right. that? Yeah, there, there's, there's some of that. I've, I've had artists where people constantly, the Grateful Dead is one. Still can't uh, fuck with yeah. that. Yeah, and Allman Brothers. People shove that stuff down my throat yeah. all the time telling me it's the greatest and thing And it in turns the world. you off. It does. Now, Music's I, supposed to be there to turn you on. Yeah. And people, a lot of, a lot of like the recommendations, a lot right. of times people help to turn it off for you instead of mm -hmm. turning it on because they're trying, they're ramming their belief and their vision of it down your throat. And, right. You instead know, of letting you discover it. It's like when you're yeah. dating somebody and you're like, man, that's an ugly, who the fuck are you to say that to anybody? Right. I have to love that person, not you. And it's the way that they moved me mm -hmm. that took me forward with them right, right right absolutely the same way it is with any piece of music so yeah you know it's it's about your connection that's to it as opposed to theirs For yeah me, music is a very personal thing it's an internal thing it's and it's something you can do by yourself you could do it with people, yeah so you can share in it but which is why i do a lot of comparisons with people especially right. a significant other per se because mm -hmm. that's right that's important yeah, to have so the back bond. catalog is the family. You're stuck with your mother, your father, your brother, your sister. <laughs> right, right. But everything else you get to choose in life. Sure. Especially you get to choose a band with the first record. That's right. You get to choose your own music. Yep. And stuff. And so, yeah, there, there's. It, it is hard to pinpoint why certain bands don't speak to me and certain ones do. You can think about it all day. That's what I'm just, saying. It's it, never going to come to light because you're always going to have a theory that runs into another theory that runs yeah. into a dead end that backs up into the theory right. that you had two <laughs> theories ago, which right. is just another dead end. Yeah. And when it, I mean, I get, my bottom line is it's it's got to move me. Yeah. You know, it has, has and, to move me first. And every day it's different. Some yeah. days it moves you because it's fucking cool. Right, right. Some days it moves you because of how insanely loud and brash it is. Yeah. Some days it moves you because of how. So feelings definitely play into yeah. that, right? Because where are, are you right now? That's right. So in your mood, I mean, being another thing, at a particular time in your life is why a band could speak to you then. I mean, you're talking about hearing about, you know, loud music that comes in and, and you got the, the drums on, come on, feel the noise, just comes in and starts beating hard kind of thing. And I think, it, the, you know, it's at the right place, the right time, the right mental, you know, state and so forth, spoke to me on all of that. Yeah. Then you add in the album art on it kind of a thing. Uh, we talked about the fact that, you know, my brother was essentially giving up this music, these cassettes, he was moving on kind of thing. So yeah. I was taking it, making up my own you know so to speak uh, so there's all those things but each one of those plays into it every all of it yeah and each one of those things i think it's it's sort of that uh perfect timing of stuff you know yeah. i because if you're not open to it you didn't hit on neil young till you're 30 yeah. dylan you weren't at the right place it's, it's you didn't feel it yet there's resonation yeah. The, somebody somebody used the word vibration earlier today, yeah, right? that's right. Think, I mean, the vibration that was sent out just wasn't, not your time. It's not your yeah. vibration. For some right. reason, you couldn't pick up on it. It's not that you missed it. It's not right. that you're above it or right. below it or that it's not your thing. It's just that right now, yeah. it's not for me. That's right. I when back in Right the now, 90s, I don't hear it. Right. Even though it's blaring. Back in the 90s, I was not a fan of Oasis at all. I just couldn't stand it. Yeah, but about a couple of years ago, I don't know why it spoke to me, and I, and I love it now. And it's but fucking it took, embarrassing. Yeah, 
<laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But, but yeah, but for years I was completely against it. Just wasn't something for yeah. me. And then I don't know, all of a sudden it clicked. It worked Boom. for me. Yeah. And I actually got into it through um, the lead singer. Uh, what's his name? Liam. Liam. Uh, you know, and it was like, I got, I got into it through the singer's solo work. That spoke to me first. I love I love Liam's records. Right, and then I went backwards and still I still don't you know, like Oasis. Yeah, I said, you know, no, Oasis isn't so bad. But, but they're not so bad. Right, but but it just wasn't my cup of tea. They were compared to the Beatles. That turned they me compared off. themselves to the Beatles. Yeah. That's what turns me off yeah. about them. I can't right. give Oasis a shot because they're cocky pricks. And there you go. So I mean, there's there's that aspect. At of least it too. Liam is a single cocky prick with his own band. In Oasis, you have two cocky pricks who right. fucking hate each other and fight over their band. And that bothers me too. Oh. You got two brothers that can't keep it together. You got the Black Crows. It's the same thing, right? Yeah, you know, but Chris and Rich Robinson, you know, and that's a turn off. So now there's that like, like you just brought up when there's internal squabbling in the band. Yeah. Sometimes the band ruins it for you. Yeah. You turn to love a band. That's why. But then the bullshit inside of a band sometimes makes you love the band. Sometimes, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, my big, I'm a huge Ted Nugent fan or of the music. Okay. But the latest ramblings and things that he gets into the political aspect of stuff, it just does not jive with me. It rubs me the wrong way. And it's made it for like the last four or five years. I can't listen to his music. And it's driving me nuts. I went and saw him in concert a number of times in the 90s. Love his stuff. But when I put it on, I just hear the rants that yeah. he's been doing as of it's late. The whole new topic also is: Yeah, is it is it their job to shut the fuck up and do their job, or are we denying them freedom of speech by saying that? But then, what about the fans who love when they do that? Well, but that's yeah, a whole other yeah, topic of all, conversation. We shouldn't that, even get into <laughs> that. Is a whole other topic. But bands' personalities and points of view. You know, back in the seventies and eighties, early nineties, there wasn't the internet the way that we have it today. The only thing you heard by them is if you were reading magazines, saw an interview on MTV or something like that. So everything that they verbally yeah. you know, threw up out of their mouth didn't get heard. And you got a very defined image of who that band was. Take to, a band to, like Pearl Jam. Yeah. One of my favorite all-time bands. And yeah, I have a very defined image of who they were. Right. Not that their deepest rooted person has changed because I don't think any of them have changed all the way down to where they are sure. as an But they've as grown as individuals. Well, yeah. like Eddie Vedder was the heaviest dude ever. Mm -hmm. Ever, period. You fucking fight me on it. Right? He was in your face to the point everything about just doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. That's what's heavy. It's awesome. But as you get older, that as much as I bit. love it, not even that he has mellowed a bit. Yeah. His taste in music turns me off to the point where mm. it makes me almost look at what he's doing today in a different light. Where it's like, I know I'm not going to like this because he... F oh. Yeah. Like, I, what are you fucking listening to, man? And, and that, you know, when, when, when Ozzy did his TV show, uh, the Osborne, yeah. it turned me off. I and didn't want to know he's that. He's a cartoon character. Yeah. So sometimes getting to know too much about your favorite band through Twitter and... and I don't know, all the other different things, Facebook, whatever posts that they're out there doing, I have found some of that stuff is just too much. Yeah, like, uh, the same person that turned me on to Fugazi and Minor Threat is trying to shove Slater Kinney down my throat, <laughs> which, kudos, like, you and I right. also, but kudos yeah. to anybody, this is the way all music should be, you should right. be able to go to different oh, realms yeah. and, and all the kinds I of mean, different shit and love everything, but some of the, that everything just doesn't move you, which makes... It's now life, the yeah. giant contradiction, because I am like that. But then the guy who's turned me onto this and now is liking yeah. this, and you're like, man, oh, fucking murder. I mean, one of the things I was going to show here was that, you know, my older brothers listened to both ABBA, Journey. I love this music. Yeah. I love Misfits and the new Jerry Only I, solo. Okay, you can't say I love Misfits yeah. and hold up a Jerry Only record. <laughs> <laughs> but I do. <laughs> and no! I, no, I know. Oh, and no, it's, I'm just, I'm, it's, it's part of why I brought it up, though. You're a Misfits fan. I'm a Misfits okay. fan. I absolutely... And then they broke up. Yeah. It's and, over. <laughs> They're doing reunion <laughs> shows, and that's awesome. I love this. Yeah. But I, I, I admit this is predominantly a nostalgia thing for me. Yeah. But for you, it doesn't work. Song titles, yeah. the lyrics of it seemed too childish or immature. Uh, I mean, those are perfect words, yes. Yeah. But I feel it just, it runs, 
Maybe what? it just wanted to run deeper than that. I don't yeah. know, but yeah, it just it doesn't do it for me. And and the funny thing is, it totally does for me. Yeah. And so that's what's interesting is I, I can take that and I for me I could I could go down saying this is my album of the year, not because it's the greatest thing in the world, but the way it made me feel. Yeah. I mean, I was like a kid when I opened this thing and I popped it into the CD player. I literally have not had a smile that big that's on my awesome. face. It was, and I was like, oh my god, I forgot this feeling where you literally want to like jump up and down and, and shake your fist in the air because it's so fucking good speaking to you, right? Like I'm saying, I know it's not the greatest album in the world, but for whatever reason, it moved me. And for you, it didn't. And how, yeah, it's, I mean, well, all right. So now, okay, yeah. there's a, two totally different fucking things, right? Mm -hmm. So this, I understand, right? can sit through, can hear it. I'm not going to use another, I'm, I'm not going to throw a band under the bus, which mm -hmm. I already did. <laughs> Um, and I didn't mean that. I just don't yeah, like them. And sure. But then you'll take, I can bear this. I can right. listen to this. What drives me insane about yeah. this is uh -huh. that, yes, it, it, it sounds like a five-year-old record, right? Mm -hmm. Just lyrically. I'm not into okay. it, so okay. Yeah. But then you take another kind of music yeah. where musically it is such nonsense to you. But how can it be such nonsense to me when 100,000 people bought that record? Yeah. What am I missing? Right. Right? Right, right. What am I missing about that? That that fucking moves you that much. Where am I off? <laughs> but well, no, am I because of yeah. all the things that sit... But there's things that move you that much. Yeah. Uh, one of the bands you're raving about right now, Wet Leg, doesn't move me. It's nostalgia. Me. It's yeah. funny. It's quirky. And something about it reminds me of indie from the 90s. I hate using indie and I hate using alternative. It reminds yeah. me of the good underground <laughs> shit from the 90s. Nostalgia for you, nostalgia yes. for me, right? So, I mean, I do, and I think that that's part of it as well. When we hear newer bands or different bands, if they remind us of something that we love, you can get yeah. attracted to that band. And I never love zombies. So there's no way yeah. I can like that. And that's yeah. not in a, it's not in jest. Yeah. So, but then you take the wet leg and they're 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 cracking stupid dick jokes, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, I know. Yeah, and they're doing it on record right, now. Right. They didn't do it on record when I was a kid. So musically, right. it drew me in because I'm wondering what is that? And right. then they drop these lyrical bombs and these quaint little melodies that you don't it, normally hear. And there's all this stuff. It is true. You. When I was listening, you're playing it in the store, and I was hearing it, and I was thinking, oh my god, I can't believe they've said that. Yeah. How did they turn that line, a silly line, into a lyric? And the interplay in there, I mean, it is creative in how they've written yes. the lyrics, even though it's it's lyrical nonsense at some times. So nostalgia grabbed me, Yeah. but then being really good at crafting, mm -hmm. or just, even if it's, if they spend an hour crafting yeah. a song, yeah. or days, or if that's just the way it naturally came, came out, out, either way, it now worked. that's where I'm stuck. That's right. So I'm over the nostalgia part, and I'm into... But, how the hell? It pulled you in, though. Yes. So it started with nostalgia, yep. but then it pulled you into actually what it is. So then where did Jerry only go with you? Is yeah. it still a nostalgia trip? Oh, no. A one, it, it was nostalgia at the point of buying it and, and accepting it for what it is and, and opening it and popping it in and hearing the throwback to it. But now I, I love the music. I like the lyrics. I mean, I don't know. It went far beyond that. Okay, yeah. I, that's awesome. Yeah. And sometimes it doesn't take you far beyond that. Sometimes nostalgia stops dead right. at the first 30 seconds of a track. Yeah. You're like, man, I thought... I was going to really be into this, yeah. but I'm not. I really wanted to be into this. And yeah. It's, and it's just, it's not. Like mm -hmm. going back on Neil Young's catalog for at least mm -hmm. 20 years. Yeah. It, that's and half some, a joke. Some, <laughs> sometimes it's just how you look at an artist. And when you... Yeah. For, for years, I was not into Ghost. And it wasn't any one thing in particular. Um, Dressing up like the Pope. I, yeah, I mean, it just was one of those things White like, yeah, it's not really my thing, you know. Rogues. <laughs> and then I finally got it when I started looking at them and thinking of them like the Misfits. Uh, this isn't him being serious up there. It's just a stage persona. It's it's what he does. It's a little tongue in cheek. And that's what I'm throwing away. Right. You don't mix that shit. Rock and roll. I know people mix it. Yeah. I, it's not my thing. It won't be my mm -hmm. thing. But it also—it's rock and roll. These guys yeah. are taking the theater. It's a character. It's who the right. fuck you are. That yeah. okay? So there you go again. Right. There's another bottom line with how music is. Rock and roll is you—you you breathe it. And mm -hmm. rock and roll can be hip hop. It can yeah. be rock and roll. It can be pop. Whatever the right. fuck it is, it's something you live and it's breathe. It's an attitude. And that's where yeah. I feel things from the music. Right. That's why I can't get into somebody right. having a stage persona. If you're gonna have a stage persona, be an actor. Be mm -hmm. in movies. Be right. on television. Right. But man, 
don't fucking mix my good rock and roll with your sh cheap, shitty <laughs> acting. And maybe you didn't make as an actor, so you decided to fucking sing in white face and robe and wear a whatever. So there's all these things that go through my head, which that goes through right. all of our there's heads. another bottom line to it. Well, for which me, it became the music. People had compared them to Blue Oyster Cult for a long time. I love Blue Oyster Cult. But the Blue Oyster Cult where? No, oh no, nothing like that whatsoever. Just musically. Okay. And when I listen to it through the lens of, okay, this is Blue Oyster Cult style music, and they're doing a thing that's like the Misfits, you know, then I was like, okay, I could get behind it. And it worked okay. for me. It's one day it just clicked. Is and th that's the coolest that thing. Was the, like, that's the point of our discussion, yeah. right? Is those clicking moments, it no was, matter what it is, whether it's like mm -hmm. or dislike. Yeah. But man, when something clicks, oh, it's great. I had, I could go back and buy four albums from them. And that's before, also what's really was cool. before Impera. Yeah. So and 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 that was coming out like a, in a month or two. So it was a perfect time. I got into it. I got all their old stuff. I got to look forward to a brand new album. And now I'm a huge fan. Of now theirs. when I bought the first Ghost record, the first one. Mm -hmm. My friend Dave mm -hmm. from Vinyl Addiction Records, he he had pointed it out to me. Oh, you gotta, you know, this, whatever. How did he sell and, uh, it to you? I don't remember. Ah. But, and then all the people at the time that were around, I heard, I saw Ghost everywhere. I heard yeah. Ghost everywhere. Yeah. And this is, this is underground shit. Because um, they weren't on TV. They weren't on radio. Mm -hmm. They weren't in magazines. And I went and I bought the record. Right. So you were drawn to it by, by word of mouth, essentially. I knew not what they looked like. Right. I didn't know that they dressed up and right. all that shit. Now, listening to it, I wasn't overtly impressed. Mm -hmm. But once I saw pictures and saw that they started dressing up, it 100% erased uh, any possible chance of it. Yeah, but I did. But prior to that, yeah. I did try it. Okay. And also because I felt I had to. So you felt a little peer pressure to at now, least know what it was. To, to yeah. have to know what it is. Yeah. Why is everybody I know talking about this? Yeah, what is it that so I'm Everybody not owns it. Yeah. I don't. I, and I was the same way. And I checked it out at, at that time early on because I was like, who is Papa Emirates, you know, the fourth or whatever. And it was like, yeah. why Why do they kill the, the singer at the end? I actually thought they were getting they new. They kill him? Yeah. See, I, I didn't know. That would have definitely I thought they were been... actually getting new singers at every tour and album. I didn't even understand this until I realized, oh, it's part of the act. They kill that guy off and then there's a new pope at the, the beginning of the next album and tour and everything. And he constantly changes. That's why, that's so... <laughs> And that's why there's that. A, it's like watching an opera. Yeah, that's yeah. Why rock it's operas too, turn me off? That's why the Who has yeah. been. I like theatrical rock. I mean, I like Alice Cooper. Alice Cooper is great, but what if you never saw an Alice Cooper show? What if you yeah. never saw Alice Cooper? You don't know it's, that it's theatrical. That's true. It's the and, songs, and, and I think Kiss is the same way. If you never saw Kiss, good the face, just good rock, rock and, and roll, roll tunes, and man. Alice Cooper is the same way. Yeah. Ghost is a little different, but, and that turns me off. Yeah. It's, image I know you talked a lot well, about well the who was always a punk rock rock and roll image but I can't do it when you throw when you say rock opera I'm out oh uh, yeah I am I immediately really... done <laughs> I don't care how great the song is the brand new Smashing Pumpkins triple album says right below it a rock opera and it kills it for me or themed albums. Scott yeah. Weiland once made mention of possibly doing something with Stone Temple Pilots where uh -huh. it's going to be a rock opera type thing or a theme thing and immediately uh, why does that turn thank god off? it never happened but yeah I don't, I don't know, man. It's to, to me. You can relate with an, with a character if an actor plays it right. Yeah. I don't think I want that music. To, to I don't want an actor me. trying to get me to relate to music when to, it's such a primal thing in me. Eating, out. sleeping, yeah. fucking. You don't get taught how to do them. You just do them, do whether them. you're good at them or not. You can do them. Right. The way music takes you over well, kind of feels the same way. But I think primal. That, right. And so that's what I was going to say. So to me, uh, the, theatrical album, rock opera, themed music, whatever. They are attempting to write something very specific as opposed to just letting the music flow yes. and be what it is. Which so is talent, I, man. Yeah. For you to sit down but and have that level of concentration. But sometimes I feel like it's forced. And oftentimes when I listen to those albums, I'm like, ah, there's a couple good songs. These were forced. These were written into it. They don't really work with this. I just want them to make an album of songs. Just record. That's right. Just See, how many records have you listened to where you feel that you can feel that it wasn't the right space of when they created the record yeah. where you're just well you know yeah and it, it's not because you don't feel it because you don't feel it but right. there's something off it, you, about the record yeah and you know and you be in your heart yeah they you know that that hard. shit's they try too hard the elder by kiss i love kiss but when they did that that was like oh my god they're, they're attempting to make something that was part of the time that the was so forced rock yeah so, so forced. forced yeah and there's drawing a great performance out of somebody and there's 
crafting a great song. Right. But there's when, forcing when a record. When bands try to move with the times and change their sound, when all the glam metal bands tried to make grunge records. It was crap. Just ACDC never did it. Yeah. I know, just stay true to who you are. Be, yeah, that's it. And I think that's that's the the key thing. I mean, things we connect with, bands that are that are true to the, themselves and putting stuff out, and you know, there's just a lot of factors that go into this. Yeah. And the end of the day, it just comes down to a lot of different varying yeah, factors. So there's not one thing. Rib your friends about it. Joke right. with them. Yeah. But don't hold it against oh, them no. because they don't like things. There's so it's many. Okay. Fa- yeah. There's so many factors of why somebody might not click with something. So. Yeah. You know, I have people that constantly shove certain bands down my throat. I'm not a live album person. People constantly want to tell me about the best. It's live almost going to turn you off more from a live album. That's right. I need to hear a studio. If yeah. you want me to like a band, I'm going to need to do that. So it's like, but if people would hear that and accept that, hey. You know, he's not into live albums. That's totally cool. You know, but people are like, oh, no, you've got to do this. You've got to do this. Don't tell me what I have to do because I'm immediately yeah. going to rebel against it and I'm not going to do it. Yeah, rebel against it. Right. It's just, and it's, <laughs> some people aren't like that. Some right. people are more conformist. Some people sure. are, are bigger rebels. Well, whatever they, whatever word you want, want to use. They want the recommendation. They want to know that this person likes it, therefore yeah. I can like it. Yes. And so, yeah, a lot of things that play into it. I mean, you know, you guys can weigh in on this. I'm sure, yep. sure you have opinions about why you've connected a specific way or why you don't connect to certain bands but you know it's all just rock and roll in the end of the day that the rolling stones it's it's only rock and roll or it's only rock and roll right so it's like you know love it for what it is if you don't like it cool no problem yeah if you do love it. it that's great too and if i don't like it no big deal yeah but don't yeah. Don't force it. Don't force it. I think that's the Don't force line. it on yourself. Don't force, force it, on it on me. people. No means no. <laughs> no means no, man. <laughs> All right, man. We're going to wrap it up there. Thanks, Thanks for guys. tuning in, See everyone. Have a great one.